Happy Saturday, Instagram and Facebook family. Welcome to Business Strategies. Oh, Lord, I tell you. Okay, I don't need you to do that for me right now, Instagram. Thank you. They want to give you a lesson in the middle of your recording. My goodness, my goodness. Thank you so much for joining me today for Business Strategies and Tips this wonderful Saturday. Excuse me. Afternoon, April 30th. Do you believe that it has been four months into this new year? This was my birthday month and I just am so excited about the new trajectory that God has taken me on to be able to share with you the business strategies and tips that I have learned over my 35, 40-ish plus years of experience in the anticipation and hope that it will take you to the next dimension of where you want to go in your business, your organization, your ministry, whatever God has led you to be a mark upon this earth, upon this world and this earth. Amen, amen. So I'm excited about what we're going to talk about today. Going into the month of May, there's going to be some rotations. But what I would like to do, if there's any challenges that you are having in your business, I need you to DM me either in Instagram or my Facebook page. Uh, you can leave a comment on my YouTube page, Lady Vern, L-A-D-Y-V-E-R-N-E, -E, and I would like to address those subjects specifically in the month of May, but we're still going to be doing some rotation of things, and as business is evolving, especially in this technological age, as we have new progressions going on, I'll be making sure that you stay up to date in how you can make your business so functionable and so full of a spirit of excellence and knowing that you are serving your community, whether it's local, whether it's nationwide or even globally, because now everything is global. I'm just sitting here imagining, I know I'm talking from a United States perspective, but there are some principles that are universal. So as this is even reaching around the world, that I'm really hoping I'm definitely making that great of an impact. So let's get on with our a lesson because I have a class that I'm supposed to be in now myself. But I said, okay, I made the commitment of Monday through Saturday. I'm going to fulfill my commitment. And my mentors understand and, and they applaud and they're um, happy for the fact that I'm moving in the things that they are teaching me. So, but I do want to put in a little commercial here. On next Saturday, May 7th, from 9 to 10 a.m., I know that may be early for some on a Saturday morning, but if you're just up and out and about, join us in for Achieving Excellence Toastmasters Club. We're having an open house. We want you to just come, have a good time, and just, we're going to have a blast. We are so excited. We talked about it this morning in our preliminary meeting, and we're looking forward to bringing a fun time that's Achieving Excellence Toastmasters. You can go into toastmasters.org and put in Achieving Excellence Toastmasters Club and you can get all of our detailed information. Uh, if I get an opportunity, I'll put the information in the chat or, or on my feed so that you can go back uh, just pop in and, and just, I appreciate you just coming and supporting uh, basically what we do. It's, it's out of... Um, are my church, World Changes Church International, hoorah to my pastors. And uh, just would appreciate your support and just coming out and just having some good time and good fun with us. The question for today is, what legal setup should I have in place for the employees of my business and organization? This is very, very serious. And again, if it's just you starting out a business, and you're just beginning to build your team, if you've been building your team all along, and if you pretty much seasoned in your business, these are still checks and balances that you can start to put in place 
so that again, you're not reaching behind and then pulling these things forward into your business. This is the month of April was all about building foundational documentation, information, uh, infrastructure, so that when you really step out into your business or get further along in your business, these are checks and balances that you can always fall back on to make sure that you have a stable, secure business, that you're not being concerned about audits like from internal revenue or the state or, or whatever you may find yourself uh, having a confrontation about. You will know that all your I's are dotted and all your T's are crossed so that you don't have to worry about, hey, my business is tight and right, I'm ready to go, bring it on, I'm ready. As a business owner and employer, it is your responsibility to pay your employees. If you are not in a position to be able to do that on some scale, please be forthright with them. Let them know, hey, I'm just on the ground floor of this. It may start out on a volunteer basis, but this is my anticipation that between the first and third year or first and fifth year, I'm anticipating employees. But if you are putting your product out there, your services out there, you're making sure that you are getting paid for your services, whether you're making arrangements, but definitely doing something up front. We will talk about that on another occasion too. I might hit that one on Monday because I know some people, most businesses have a problem with getting paid so that they can pay their employees. So yes, we will address that issue most assuredly. You should ensure that they receive at least the minimum wage per hour. The minimum wage has grown up nationally. Find out what that is. Trust and believe God that you'll be able to at least do that and he will meet your measure of faith. Making sure that each employee gets the money you say that you, that the both of you agree that you are going to pay and give a specific pay period, whether that's weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, just be plain, be clear, be concise. Going back to our first lessons, you must be a legal entity with your federal and state governments to be considered a legitimate business so that you are taking care of employee taxes, which is mandatory for both for-profit and tax-exempt organizations. Verify that each prospective hire has the eligibility to work meaning they're either a U.S. citizen, they have a green card or some type of immigration legalization so that you're not being uh, come against in your compliances, which means that they will fill out a form I-9, that's a federal form, and a W-2 tax exemption. We're gonna go into that too because, and I'm, I'm even gonna do research on this because I wanna be accurate in the one instance, but here I'm going on integrity. And having some background in taxes, I like to advise my clients or even an employee, what would you rather have? Most of your money coming to you during the year or getting a lump sum tax return check? You're giving the government a free loan because they're not going to give you interest for that. But we'll talk about that because that, that's a whole nother subject I really want to get into, but that's a food for thought. You must have a workman's compensation policy in place and liability insurance in place, minimum. Now, when you go to your insurance agent that handles business insurance, not life insurance so much, but if they have a background in business insurance, you want to make sure that for your industry, you are in 100% compliance with the type of insurance you need to have in place to cover yourself and your workers. Record keeping system, AKA human resources department. That human resources department could be you if you're just starting out, but it's a human resources department nonetheless, because there's documentation that you must keep on file. When you can establish that from the very beginning, then again, you're not reaching back trying to recoup information. This is all information you're getting up front 
from your potential employees, making sure that they are in compliance with you as well as you with them. So a complete workup, their name, their address, where they live, their phone number, email addresses, all their contact information, even uh, emergency contact information, their social security numbers and the different legalities that says in a filing system that this is your legitimate employee. The federal law requires employers to report basic information on new employees within 20 days of hire to the state in which you are conducting your business and that these employees are working. You may have divisions in different states. You need to have a complete filing system for every business entity that you have. The U.S. Department of Labor has mandated requirements of a specific place that all employees at any given time can look at those labor laws and regulations, such as like a bulletin board in a lunchroom or main area where all employees are going in and out, where maybe they're punching time clocks or keying in or where they freshen their, their hands or wherever. I don't care if you put it in the walls of the bathroom but they need to have those labor laws available to them so that they can be compliant. It's an accountability issue. You're accountable to them, but they are accountable to you as well to adhere to the Department, U.S. Department of Labor laws so that no one is in a violation and so that you know how to make sure that your employees are in a position where they don't have to report you to the Department of Labor for any um, out of compliance activities. Employing workers also means that you must comply with OSHA. That's Occupational Safety and Health Administration. Meaning if you have a brick and mortar, there should be an inspection of some kind that is cleared with OSHA so that there's no environmental uh, hazards it could be a dance studio, but you have to make sure those floors are tight and right. There's nothing popping up. Your, your, your bathroom, your utilities, all of these things need to be in some form of compliance. And even if you're not in a physical location, wherever you're going to have employees working for you, that environment must be safe. And if you want to look that up, there's the Occupational Safety and Health Act of 1970 to help you along with those compliances. Small businesses with fewer than 50 full-time equivalent employees are exempt from the Affordable Care Act mandate that requires larger businesses to carry health insurance for their employees or pay an annual penalty. Federal government offers incentives for small employers who do offer insurance for employers with fewer than 50 employees can get their employees insurance through a small business health options program or shop exchanges. Those that have fewer than 25 employees can qualify for tax credits up to worth 50% of the cost of health insurance premiums. So do your homework regarding health benefits. Let me say this, if you are in a position to offer good salaries and good benefits, offer it. The word of God encourages us to take care of our employees so that our employees will then in turn handle our businesses well. A happy employee makes for a prosperous business. That's just a principle that regardless how some companies may be cutting corners or whatever, you see it in the reactions, the responses, the way employees conduct themselves on your place of business, be more observant. And if you see that employees are doing a half job, they're not putting their, what they said on their resume they, they can give and do and the potential of what they can give and do, then it's you as a business owner because at the end of the day, this is your business. And you need to make sure that you have quality employees and that you're providing the services, the equipment, the resources that your employees can do an excellent job. Give them the training, especially in customer service, please. Manners, 
hospitality. Make sure that your employees are clear on the vision, mission, and purpose. Nike, every employee in Nike memorizes the mission statement, even down to the janitorial service. You ask one of those janitors, it was a testimony Bishop Jakes, T.D. Jakes had said, he talked to a janitor and he was able to recite the mission statement for Nike. That's because they took the time to make sure that their employees was on the same page with them. You want to make sure that your employees have your vision, mission, and purpose in mind and in heart. And when you're doing what you know to do and you have the resources and the ability to do, to make sure that your employees are comfortable, that they're clear on the service that you're looking for them to provide for you, they will do it with joy, with gladness. And you can tell when a person is happy on their job about what they're doing and when an employee is not. Don't push that off to the side. You know, don't be that Tilla the Hun or pirate type of leader. Because after the pandemic, yeah, things got a little hairy and we know there's jobs out there, but people don't want to work. You know why? Because they are not being treated with just common courtesies from the employers. People will be glad to go to work when they know they're being respected, that their work is being appreciated. I tell people often, and it's not a cliche with me, it's not, it's a habit and it comes from my heart. I will tell you in a minute that I appreciate what you do, that I'm grateful for what you do, what you do. I'm thankful for what you do because you don't have to do it. You could do it somewhere else and with someone else, great or small. I always let people know how much I appreciate what they do, whether they do it for me directly or indirectly. It's just nice to be nice. It's just nice to be kind. It doesn't cost anything but just a smile, a facial expression that's genuine, sincere, to let your employees know. You, I mean, and especially if they're family. Don't take family for granted if they work for you. Serve them just as if they were anybody else that's serving you. Serve equally. Be impartial, but be fair. Be just as an employer. And when you, I mean, not that you're a counselor, not that you got to be in everybody's business, but if these people are spending the bulk of their time and life on your job that you're providing for them, care a little bit. You know, if you see their countenance is different because if they're going to be in the public eye of your business, they're representing you. So if they come in, they've had a situation at home or whatever, you know, let them punch in and say, you know, just, just come for a second. Are you okay? Just a simple question. Not that they have to, they may cry out. You know, you, you just don't know the things and the challenges that they may have. And I understand putting on the employer hat now, I understand that employers under a lot of pressure as well. You're trying to meet quotas. You're trying to meet bill payments. You're trying to meet the different things that you need to come up with. But I guarantee you, and I'm saying this by the spirit, I guarantee you, if you take the time to get feedback from your employees, because they're your boots on the ground with your clients, with your customers, and ask them for their opinion, ask them, well, what's your feedback on the services that we're providing from customers? And let them tell you, well, clients are having a problem with this or that or this product or that product. Take that into consideration. Your employers will feel so good to know that what they feel matters, that what they experience matter, that what they share with you matters. And you'd be surprised a lot of some of the challenges you may be facing, your solution may be found within your employees. Because again, their boots on the ground, they're face to face with your clients and customers. So periodically, monthly meeting with your employees to just have a chat and chew you know, order a snack or something and sit down with them and say, okay, how do you think the business is going? Or how do you think this organization is going? If you were running this organization, what would you do? You'd be surprised the insight and the hindsight and the foresight that may be in your employees that the very answers you're looking for
for the challenges that you're facing as an employer will come through them. And when they see that you, and, and then applaud them for that, even if it's just a certificate for, for just being a conscientious employer, I mean, employee, you will be surprised. Everybody loves a thank you. Everybody loves a hand clap or a pat on the back sometime. Just don't have your employees coming in and out, day in and day out, and they don't see a smile from you. I mean, and all hell could be breaking loose in your life too. But I have found in my experiences in business that when you push through and give that kindness, give that attentiveness, take heed to your surroundings and your atmosphere of those that serve along with you, you would be surprised how much you will all be able to receive collectively. Your businesses will begin to flourish a lot more because everybody's on one accord. Everybody's on the same page. And where there is unity, truly there is strength and power. With that being said, I know I got a little long today, but th this is one of my passions about being in business. When you can respect your employees and employers, when you can have that bona fide relationship with one another. When I say relationship, I'm talking business relationship where everybody's inclusive and everybody matters. Everybody will be glad to come to work, even you, and you own the business. Because sometimes some people don't even want to come to their own company. Because, yes, when you get overwhelmed with challenges, I can see that. But be open to solutions. Be open to recommendations and suggestions from everybody that serves along with you. And you will be surprised the change and the trajectory that your business will begin, that turn that your business will begin to make. And then everybody can enjoy the fruits of your labor. Again, I know financially things are tight, but there was one job that I worked on and they didn't give us a lot of salaries, but they gave us some nice incentives. They gave us Christmas bonuses and a Christmas party so we could take a little bit of the bonus and buy the outfit for the Christmas party. I mean, they went all out for the Christmas party. Then they turned around and had a picnic, company picnic. I don't think they even do that anymore. But you'd be surprised if companies went back to that. Who knows what would come out of that? We used to get gifts for our kids like it was Christmas. And I'm not talking about no cheap stuff. So, but just ask, ask God to show you what incentive, what incentive program can you put in place for your employees that will keep the morale up? You know, again, and I'm, I'm, I'm giving my kudos to my girl, Miss, Miss Pinky, slutty vegan. She gets her employees in it, man. I mean, they, they make the videos, they, they, and they just keep bringing the people and they feel like they are part of something big because they are. You could be a teeny tiny company, but if you make people feel big, they will help you blow your company up. Give it a shot. Just try it. You never know. Bye for now. Have a great Saturday. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Relax. And just let the creativity of God flow through you on this weekend. Have a great one.